Hey, this is Chris and I am Chuck and Dice. Appreciate you watching my video today. I am going to be trying to get paid three times every time I hit a number. And uh, let's see how this goes. It's a thought I've been kicking around and I wonder if I can, if I can move this just a smidge. Well, that's going to mess with my dice game. I, I realize I'm, yeah, that'll be all right. Um, I'm almost on the top. I'm just resetting my camera a little bit. Anyway, um, I'm going to see if I can get paid three times. If you're going to get paid, once is good, twice is nice, three times. If you can get paid three times every time you hit a number, uh, well, you know, what would that look like? Well, there's there's a way you can do that by using the hops. So I did um, put my hops out here on uh, down here in the come area so you can see it on the camera. And I'm going to show you how this works. So I'm going to try to play numbers that can pay me three times, which means I'm going to use the field as well as the hops and some place bets. So I want to get paid on the field, the hops, and the um, and the place bets three times. Can I do that? How does that look? What's it going to be? Uh, so let's see how this goes. I'm going to play with the $10 table, and I'm going to play the all tall small because I like to play it. So I've got $10 that I'm going to put on the 505, and I don't know if you can see that up here on my small camera, but I've got five on the small, five on the tall, and I'll mark those up there. But uh, let's let's just see how this goes. So I'm going to come out, and I'm going to try to get a point to start this off, and I'm going to use a dice set that that sometimes produces outside numbers for me. Which set it is doesn't matter because it's not the same set that's going to work best for you. But uh, I'm going to try to see if I can hit some outside numbers. There's a four, three, one. All right. So mission accomplished on step one. So that's going to be a point of four. And let me see if I can get those in. The, uh, where are we at? Three, one. Right about there, yeah, we got a little tight window to get those squeezed in. All right, so three, one, four, four is the point. And what I'm going to do, <clears throat> this is a $10 table. I'm going to, well, I'm going to put odds down here. I, you can't probably see those odds, but they're down here. We're going to put $10 behind the uh, four. I'm going to play the five. I can't win the field on the five, but I'm going to hedge that just a little bit by placing it. I can win two out of three. And let's see, so I've got $30 on the 5, 9, and 10. I'm going to avoid the 6 and 8 for now. And then I'm going to, what do I need? I'm going to get some white chips. Let's do this. Sorry for my <clears throat> delay while I'm getting set up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a dollar on each of these uh, these ways that I can win. Now I am going to, again, the five doesn't win in the field. Uh, by the way, I'm putting $10 in the field. I'm trying to triple up, okay? So this is not an iron cross type strategy. Uh, none of that stuff. I'm not, I'm not trying to uh, win on, the, on every roll. I realize the six and the eight lose. Uh, the horn will only win in the field, and I'll lose the hops. That's not going to, uh, uh, to be what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to see if I can get paid three times on every hit and how that looks compared to uh, trying to cover every number. So there's no iron cross here. The six and eight are uh, definitely exposed. I'm not worried about that on this particular strategy. I want to, uh, I want to see if I can get paid three times. So on those, uh, those hops... The hard four and hard ten would pay uh, would pay thirty for one. The rest of those are going to pay fifteen for one. So that's a little bit of a win, but again, I'm looking to get paid three times. So I want to win on the on the place bet. I want to win on the uh, on the hop, and I want to win on the field. I, I want to win three times, which means I need a four, a nine, or a ten to roll. The five pays me two ways. Let's see how this goes. Okay, there's aces. All right, I'll mark the 
two on the all tall small. Are we in the zone there? All right, so this is an interesting play because I'm going to win double the bubble. So I'm going to win 20 in the field. I am going to lose the hops. So those hops are going to come down, and I'm going to need to give them 10 to replace the hops for two change. And I'm going to put those right back up. I'll probably leave them up in the future and not have to replace them every time. So I'm going to rack this 10. In that case, because a horn rolled, I only got paid on the field. Uh, fortunately for me, it was a two. And all right, we're all set here. So I did realize, actually, I was thinking about this. I'm going to go ahead and bump up the five place one more nickel. I want there to be a little more value there because I am losing the field. I'm not really playing any kind of specific strategy here. So, I mean, this is a strategy, but I'm not following any formula or anything that's just kind of going with what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking. All right. Well, there's a seven. All right, that's a six one. I realize I forgot to, uh, I'm not marking the uh, the numbers on the uh, KPI, so uh, in fact, I used my phone for the camera over here, so I do not have a, a way to do that anyway. Um, okay, that was a 6-1, and I just realized I also forgot to leave those over here so you could see them. Wow, I am all over the place today. Okay, so we're going to be off on everything. That was a big loser. All right, so all the hops come down too. And that was not a good session, good hand. All right, so $10 on the pass line. I need 10 for the 505 on the all tall small. And let's see, we are coming out again. And Let's see, that was, yeah, that was not good, <laughs> not good first hand. So let's see, I'm just going to try a different set here again. I, I don't like calling out what set I'm using because different sets for different people, different, different tosses work well at different times. So I'm just going to shoot and not focus on trying to talk about dice sets. Okay, that was a crazy. All right, we gotta, like, gotta come out seven. And that's not surprising because my dice were all over the place. All right, so that's gonna win on the pass line and it's gonna replace my 505, so that's a push on all tall small. Again, I'm not marking these because I Forgot that I was using my camera and I don't have access to something right here where I can can update those numbers. So all right, that's gonna be an eight. So eight is gonna be the point. Uh inside point. So that's gonna cost us a little more than Oh, then we'd like because, well, like, yeah, okay, there we go. Um, let's see, I'm going to go $40 across the, uh, on the outside. And, okay, so 40 on the outside, four, five, Nine and ten. I'm gonna put ten in odds behind the eight, even though it's an out or it's an inside number. And I need I'm gonna get some change for that nickel and ask them to hop the outside outside numbers for me. So that's eight dollars. And I need more change. 
for the uh, field. So ten dollars in the field, three fifteen and change. All right. So I'm set up now, and um, point is eight, but we are looking for outside numbers. I just remembered that I was doing fifteen on the five. That'll just provide fifteen will win twenty one. That will replace everything. So at least on the uh, on the five, I don't lose anything. Don't gain much, but I've got eight dollars plus the so eighteen dollars at risk with the field, and I'm going to win twenty one. All right. There's a nine. All right, Nina. Center field. Pull this back over here. There we go. All right, so this is this is what's going on. This is what I'm looking for. Nine is going to win in the field, so we'll start there. That's ten. Uh, nine on the place bet is going to win fourteen. So let's put that here. That's fourteen going to win on the hop. The way the hop works is it was a 5-4. So that 5-4 is going to stay. Everything else goes down. And that 5 hopping is going to win 15 plus the original dollar. So I've collected 10, 15. What do I got? Uh, 10, 20, 35, 39 collected. I did lose uh, $7 on the hop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 7 from this and ask them to go ahead and replace my hops. And I won't keep doing that. It'll be easier to just pay. 15 minus the 7 is going to pay $8. And down, or eight, eight and eight to stay up. Okay, so I've got all of this. this is what I won. And I'm just going to rack that. All right, so that was a win on the nine. Getting paid three places. And that is aces, all right. A one and a one. So that's gonna lose the hops, but the field is gonna pay double, so it's gonna pay 20 in the field, and I need eight to leave the hops up. So I'm gonna take 10 for two change. That's gonna net me $12. Just rack that. All right. There's another nine. All right. Good, good. Nine is good. Uh, five, four. So that five, four, same as last time, is going to pay 10 for the field. It's going to pay 15 for one, but I need the other seven to come back. So that's going to pay $8. Is what I'm going to net on the hops. Eight plus the original seven is the 15. All right. And it's going to pay... 14 on the 9, and I'm going to pay it 15 for 1 from my rack, and I'm just going to collect all of this. No pressing this time, just, just collecting, seeing if I can get paid 3 times on every hit. How much does that gain you if you're hitting those numbers versus... Uh, versus only getting paid once the other ways. And actually, in this case, 
the six and the eight are left open, how much do I lose every time? Because I'm losing $18 every time I roll a six or an eight, except right now the point is eight, so I'm not going to lose on that. But a six rolling would be bad. That'd be the hole. There's, that's funny. There's a six. I called the six, said that's the hole in this today on this particular hand, and I rolled a four and a two. All right, so that's going to lose the field, and I'm going to lose all of those hops. So that's going to take $18 to stay back up. There's my field, and 18 for the hops. And we'll stay up on the six. All right, so the only benefit on the six is I do get to mark the six for the all tall small. And honestly, if I can't roll a six, I don't deserve to hit the all tall small. So it is going to happen at some point. The goal with this is to get paid three times on every hit. And obviously the six and eight are the exception. There's a three, and of course the horns don't help um, much. I, I am going to, the two and the twelve do, but let's see, that's an ace-deuce. So on the three, I'm going to win in the field, but I need eight dollars to replace that. So I'm going to give that back to them and say, uh, replace my hops, there's two change. So the hops bleed me on a horn, unless it's an ace-deuce. I'm sorry, an ace deuce is what that was. Unless it's a two or a twelve, um, a two or a twelve pay double in the bubble. So uh, in that case, I'm winning twenty, and I need to replace that eight. So um, I win two dollars on a three or eleven, and I win twelve dollars on a two or twelve. There's probably some ways to add value to this, and uh, there's a hard 10. So that'll be a little bit of a nice bump. Hard 10 is going to pay extra on the hop. Uh, let's see, 5-5. Five, five. All right, there we go. So 5-5. Five, five. That place bet, well, we're going to pay, we're going to win 10 in the field. The hop is going to win 30 because that hop on the hard 10 pays 30 to 1. So it's going to pay 30 minus seven because I need to replace the other seven numbers. So 30 minus seven is going to be 23. So we'll pay 23 for the hops to stay up. And the place bet is going to pay 18. And what I'm going to do on that 10 is I'm going to pay 20 for two. And now I'm going to collect. So that was a nice hit that hard way. Is a nice hit. It's going to collect 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 50, $51. I got paid three ways on a quarter for that extra, extra reds. Okay. I got paid three ways on that hard 10. I paid $51 total if I'm counting right. And we keep shooting. So, so uh, that has worked out nicely. That was a good hit. There's a six. All right, another hole in the strategy. Every sta every strategy has a hole. Every strategy is missing numbers. Even the, uh, I mean, you know the. It's either missing numbers or it has things that don't pay you as much. So that six is going to lose both of these. It's going to lose the field, and it's going to lose the hops. I'm going to replace the field, and I'm going to ask them to put me back up on the hops. There's $8 for the hops. $10 to replace the field. And we already marked the six on the all tall small. So we're ready to go. And we need some more outside action. Not extreme outside, just 
slightly outside. How about another hard 10? That would be good. Can't see over there. All right, that's an eight. Okay, so six two eight is the point. And back a little bit. All right, so eight is the point. And eight is going to lose in the field. It's going to lose all the hops. I'll put those back up in a minute. But we're going to get paid 22. We got 10 in odds and 10 on the pass line. So um, I'm going to put that odds back now. And the 22, I need to replace the... I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and replace those hops because they are out there right now. There's $8 to replace the hops. I don't want to have to pull them down, but they are off. We're not working on the come out. We'll leave that off. We'll wait uh, for a point to be established before we start working any of that. So just to make that clear, and there's no confusion there, the hops are not on. They're not on. I just already paid for them. So. Here we go. Dice are out. Same shooter. And that's going to be a six. All right. On one hand, I think that it's not so bad when the six or the eight become the point here. It does cost more up front. But now I only have one hole because I've got the point of six. And having the point be six means that I have one of these combinations covered because I'm going to play odds and now everything's on and working again and we're on a point of six which I have rolled a few times already so that's probably I rolled more sixes than eights uh, this hand so perhaps I should bump up my odds with my winnings And there's a six right back. I do not have a chance to bump my odds up because I rolled a five one six right back. So that's going to, I forgot. Okay. So I forgot my field. That's going to be the field that loses. We're going to get paid 22 on the pass line and odds. That's, um, uh, pass line win. All right. So I'm going to, Let's see. Let's just do it this way. I'm going to take $10, and I need two change to keep the hops up. So, again, just like last time, the hops are up, but they're off. They're not there. Just pretend they're not there. I got $10 on the pass line, and I'm ready to work on the – I'm not working to come out. I'm ready to come out again. Same shooter. Looking for another point. And there's a point of five fever. So I'll mark the five on the all tall small. And we have a new point, four one five. So five is gonna be the point, which is interesting. And I'll note a couple of things here. So I do need $10 for the field. I'm going to go ahead and put this 15 in odds, and actually I'm just going to make that 10, so that'll cover everything I need to cover here. 10 on the pass line, 10 in odds. We're now working on the uh, hops, and now that I roll the 5, I don't know if you can see this on the small cam, but I've got a 2, a 3, the 4 is ah, the four hasn't been hit, I've got a 5 and a 6. So I have one number left on the all tall on on the small side of the all tall small, and I always hedge that out. I never miss a guaranteed. If I've got a guaranteed opportunity to uh, win, I'm going to take that, and I'm going to actually hedge the four as a no four. I'm going to lay it for a quarter, which is going to cost me uh, a dollar in vig. Actually, I don't need to take those away. I need to take the vig. I'm going to lay that four and pull this this down. And actually, what I'm going to do with that 10 is in the, I'm going to put the 10 on the hard four. Uh, yeah, you can't see that on the big screen, but I've got a hard four for $10. Uh, 
And that way, that hard four will pay 70 if I lose the 50 and it comes hard. I still get paid on the hops. I'll leave those working. We'll just let those stay the way they are. I'll get a little bit of bonus there as well. And I'll also get paid in the field. So rolling a four will not be a problem for me. I won't mind it, but I do like to hedge that out uh, if I can. If I get one box number that's left, it's too hard to pass up. All right, so I'd love to roll a four. I'd love it to come hard at this point, but uh, anyway, it's not a bad way. So let's just uh, see how this goes. And <laughs> there's an ace deuce. All right. I uh, thought for a second there I got a three one four. Okay, so that's an ace deuce, and that's gonna pay in the field. I'm gonna pay ten dollars. I need to tell them to leave my hops up, so that's gonna be ten right back. They're gonna give me two change, and I netted a measly two dollars on that ace deuce. All right, so everything else is ready to go. Let's not roll ace deuces or yos. That's not. Not the best, although I do need a yo for the all-tall small, so I don't mind that once, just once. And <laughs> there's another ace-deuce, back-to-back, shockers, back-to-back. -back. Now, remember, that's going to pay 10. I need 10 to keep my $8 hop up, so they're going to give me two change. I'm going to rack that, and... We will not do that again. I'll tell you what, the way to keep that from happening again is to ask the dealers to give me $2 on an ace-deuce straight up. So in addition to everything else, I've got ace-deuce for $2 straight up. And that will be the guaranteed way to not roll an ace-deuce three times in a row. Well, I rolled a seven. That's not not what I wanted to do, but I didn't roll an ace deuce. I guess I'd give you that. Six one, the fun is done. And I got that no four. Never hit the four. And whoops, reset the all tall small. I will pay that four in just a minute. So we're gonna lose all of this. And whoops. This four, no four, $50 on it is going to pay a quarter. All right, so 50 is going to pay 25. All right, so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get a third quarter for that. And we'll rack that. All right, so uh, we lose the uh, $8 top also. Let's see. I'm not sure we have time for one more. Um, I'm down about uh, about a quarter, it looks like, maybe at the moment. Let's give it one more whirl. $10 for the all tall small, $10, $505, $10 on the uh, pass line. And just a reminder, the hops are not working and I haven't even paid for them yet. So mental note. All right. Oh, that was an odd one. We got a hard eight. We got a little weird kickback bounce and ended up with a four, four, hard eight. All right, so eight is the point. Just like last time, we'll put 10 in odds, try to make that eight pay for everything. $10 on the field. And we need 10 on the four, five, nine, and 10. That's outside. And I need eight to pay for my hops. Dealers, please give me hops on the outside. Thank you very much. All right, we are in business.
aces, double the bubble. All right, one, one, two. And all right, the two is going to win double in the field. $20. And I'm going to give them 10 back as they keep my hops up. They're going to give me two chains. It's going to net me $12. And we're all ready to go. Thinking about that eight, thinking about pressing, not sure. I should have put three units on the five, but um, yeah, not sure. Lots of ideas. Oh, that was strange. <laughs> and there went a five. All right. So that was an odd kickoff, and it ended up being a two, three. Two, three, five. So in this case, we lose the field and the five, and the hop is going to get paid 15 for that one hop on the two, three. Right there, two, three. But I'm going to need seven to replace it. So I win 15, and I'm just going to throw in $2 to take that seven away. That'll be a net of $10 after that, which I'll put back in the field actually. And I'm going to go ahead and Replace that five with fifteen dollars so it doesn't happen again. All right, the five is kind of the weird one. You could leave the five off since it's not a field winner, but I still get paid two ways if I roll a five, and um, as long as I got that five bumped up to the right level, it's gonna be in that game even if it's small okay and that's a nine nina center field three ways to get paid on that nine let's do it there's a five and a four which seems to be the way it's coming for me all right so 10 in the field and we're gonna get paid 15 minus the seven is going to be eight dollars hopping, and that nine is going to pay 14. So I'm going to pay 15 and take one from the hop, and we'll collect 32. 32 dollars collected. What do I want to do with that 32? Let's try this. Let's do something different this time. I'm going to take one each. And press up the four, five, nine, and ten. I've got two dollars left. Let's, I mean, ten, two units, two ten dollars total. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the dealers to press up my hops, and I'm going to get two change. This ten is going to give me what I need to put two dollars on each of the hops. Let's try that. All right, now. Still 10 in the field, but I'm trying for some extra juice on the hops. Now would be a great time to throw a hard 4 or a hard 10. And that's going to pay 60 for that hop. $2 on it. All right. Hard 4, hard 10. Let's do it. Oh, we got a six. <laughs> we got the one number right now that pays nothing. The eight would pay on the pass line. The six pays nowhere. Five, one. Five, one, six. He is a killer. Lose the field. Lose the hops. I'm going to go back to one unit since it did not pay. So we're back to needing. Eight dollars. Stay up on the hops, and I'm gonna have to get change for a quarter. Put two, ten in the field, and rack fifteen. And all right. Now that did not work, so we're back to 
the beginning of the process, except I guess my my place bets are still pressed up. Hard four or hard ten still wouldn't be a bad thing. And that's an eight, so that's going to be the point. Not what I wanted to do, but I'll take it. That's why you go ahead and put odds on it, even if it's not a number I want to roll. That is going to lose in the field. It's going to lose the hops. We're going to get paid 22 for the pass line. That's 10 for the flat bet and 12 in odds. And I need to give them $8 to stay up on the hops, but I am going to turn them off. They won't let you stay up on the hops, but this is, in this case, the easiest way to demonstrate that. So I'll leave it. I'm going to leave it up because it's easier to stay up than to take it all down. And we're coming out. Everything's off except the pass line. Can't see. It's over in the corner. Okay, that's going to be a Yo 11. Yo 11 is a front line winner. Something called a natural. And that's going to win $10 on the pass line. And I'm going to stake, take that $10 and put it straight in the field and work that field for the come out. Uh, another 11 would pay me both places. And certainly I want to get paid. Um, if I can roll a uh, 4, 9, or 10 as a box number, then I get paid there too. And if I roll a, another horn, a, a horn number, uh, 2, 3, or 12, I'm going to lose the pass line. And that will hedge that out a little bit. So I'm trying to double dip here if I can roll another horn or another uh, field number. And I did not. I rolled a hard six. Hard six is going to be the new point. I'm going to lose that field that I just won on the pass line. And I already paid for my pops, so I just need $10 for the field. And I do need $10 for that six as the point. And we're ready to go. All right. Now, that four has not been coming for me today with this set. Um, it's kind of unusual for me, but it happens. And it's funny enough that my all tall small on the small side, all I need is the three and four. I rolled plenty of threes the last hand. There's a hard 10. That'll work. That'll work. Leaves me a 12 for the tall. Just a 12 on the tall side left. All right, five, five. Hard 10, that is going to be a nice pay. We get paid 10 in the field. The hard 10 is going to pay 30 minus 7 to stay up. is going to. That means it's going to pay 23 on that. That hard 10 now has, I have the 10 placed for, uh, for 15 is going to pay 27. Get that clear over there. So that's a nice win. What do I do from here? Well, let's just think about this for just a second. <clears throat> I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in $8 and ask the dealers to press my hops up. I'm going to put this extra 8 bucks right there just so we know it's out there. It's on the hop board. We're in play. I'm going to press the 4, 5, nine and ten up one more which means i need to buy the four and ten so there's my fee my casino requires those to be uh, bought and paid for up front so stretch over here we've bought those let's see let's pull those back on over here all right we got thirty dollars left and i'm gonna go ahead and raise the Field up, so there's three units in the field, and I'm going to rack the quarter. All right, let's just rack that quarter. And all right, we're all good. Let's keep throwing outside numbers of some kind. All right.
What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Oh, we got a 527. Ouch. All right. That's no fun. 5 2, and we are through. No 12. I needed the 4 and the 3 on the small side. And I needed another hit that I could have probably collected. That would have been the intelligent thing to do, but I didn't. So all this comes down. All this comes down. And we're left in the hole. All right, so I should have collected something there, but I didn't. And we've got, yeah, roughly $200. We're down about $100. But anyway, you get the point. Playing the outsides plus the hops plus the field. The reason you don't play the inside is because you don't get paid all three ways. Now, you could hedge it out if you wanted to play a smaller amount on the six and eight, and you wanted to make sure you had every number covered but the exposure is higher. I think maybe you just play the numbers. Play the five, maybe. It hedges the field, and you got the hop a little bit. But if you wanted to leave the five off and literally play a reverse iron cross, you could play the field, the four, the nine, and the ten, and the hops, and you're looking for four, nine, and tens, and the field would, you know, if it was a horn number, the field would hopefully pay for the cost of replacing the hops. But you're really looking at that point for four, nine, and ten. You might as well take the five and play the play the outside straight up the five is a little bit you get paid twice but not on the field anyway you can play this several ways but the thought was i think it's a valid thought at the right if you're hitting with the right dice set and you've got combinations that are winning you get paid once in the field once in the hops and once on the place bet you get paid three times for every hit and who wouldn't want to get paid three times all right anyway that's it for today thanks for watching and we'll see you next time